Okay, uh, what I will do here in this first lecture on uh, formal methods, so let me modify this to be formal methods of programming languages. And as uh, said in the, uh, uh, as I pointed out in the outline and the syllabus, we will be talking about the automata theory basically as one way of uh, computer language verification uh, systems. So uh, my name is Mohammed Malkawi. I will be leading this course. Uh, and the class schedule has already been uh, posted in the e-learning page. And this is introduction to the theory of computation. I will use the book uh, by Michael uh, Seibser, second edition, in case you need uh, a reference. Now, uh, just uh, to go over some basic concepts, uh, the basic computation, uh, computation method, whatever that computation is, you need a processor and you need a memory. That's what computation is about. So you, what's computer computation? Of course, you can compute without a computer, without uh, external memory. You can just use your fingers. You can use your brain, you can use your memory, whatever. But here we are talking about automatic computerized computation, which requires a CPU at the basic and memory. You already know that. And in cases, if you want to expand, so this is your CPU, that's your temporary memory, which I just called it memory. Uh, you have some place where it's program memory. So your memory now has uh, these two components, so we are adding to memory. Uh, uh, okay, so this is going here. So this is what my memory is. That's my temporary memory and program memory. That's my CPU. So let me color this with some different color. So that's my CPU, and this is now I am adding some input and output. That's uh, okay. Let's make this yellow. It's yellow. So that's how our uh, computation system looks like. And this computation system, it's used to compute functions like x cube, for example, your memory. Your computer memory will store the way you will do that. Let's say if in order to do X cube, I will just do first X times X, and then I will use the temporary storage of the X square and then multiply it by an X, and then eventually will uh, send the uh, result to the output here, whether it's printed or the screen or uh, whatever you want. So this is an example. So I will do my input. I will uh, enter, let's say, the uh, number two. Okay, this is step number one. Then I will compute the function two times two equals four. So that's first, uh, I execute this statement, x times x, so it's four, and then I will store it here, four. Then the next step, I will bring this four here, I will use the instruction. Uh, I will do that. Okay. I will use this instruction, which is x square times x. And then that x square, I will bring it here, which is my z. Okay. And then the result here will be executed. So perform the multiplication here. Okay. Do mul multiplication. Okay.
Okay. Oops. And so do the multiplication and then the output will be eight. That's typical. We're not going through the, this is called uh, uh, control, the control program. Let's say I put my uh, control memory or the uh, ROM, that's my uh, temporary memory, which is my RAM, and then that's my output, which could be on the disk space and so on. We are not going through that. That's not what we are concerned about, but we are concerned about now the automaton. That's what we will be using throughout this course. So this CPU and the memory, basically that's what my automaton is. And that's my, the memory, which is, uh, that's where my program memory, that's what tells the CPU what to do. That's what the state diagram is. That's what the steps here or instructions. And uh, that's where my memory, if I need a memory. And of course the IO, which is my, it's going to be my input tape all the time. That's how we would proceed. Now the automaton, that these are transformations. You see this link here, the red link is called an uh, automaton. Okay, let's make it blue and make it trick so that we know what it is. So this is my transition. This transition from state to state, that's my automaton. So my automaton consists of, it consists of these, what we call the states. Automaton is states and transitions. By states, I mean, uh, let me just take the example of uh, someone is traveling from place, let's say from Erbit to Amman. So first I am at the station uh, on campus. So there is a bus now. Now the bus takes me from one station. Let's say I am currently here at this station. This is my bus station. Uh, the bus takes me, if the bus comes, it takes me all the way to, let's say to uh, Erbit. Uh, Mujamma Erbid, where that's where the uh, all buses gather. And from here, I take another transportation that takes me, let me uh, color this with some different color, make it black, make it thick. And here, let's say this is my final destination. So I take two transportations to get to my final uh, destination. Let me color this with uh, some red, meaning that this is my final destination. Uh, and we will be actually using in this uh, class to look at the final destination rather than to color. I'll just do a double circle. Double circle like this. So these double circles, it means it's the final uh, result. Hello? Abu, ahara, ahara, alaikum, salam, ahara. Okay, so this is what we would be calling an automaton. The automaton has, as I said, this, it has a state and transition. Uh, now the memory here, okay, the different type, different types of automata will differ. This will be, the automaton is going to be this section, the state and transitions is almost the same for all. This is what our processor actually is. That's what our CPU. It executes a statement, then it goes to another statement, then it goes to another, then it decides to finish or it may branch. And uh, it depends whether it will use temporary memory or not. Okay, there are three types of automata that we will cover in this course. One is called the finite automata. This has not, does not have memory at all. So uh, it doesn't have memory. And there is a push down automata which has a limited form of memory called the stack, which we know what a stack is. And there is the Turing machine, which is the very general 
automaton which uses RAM or random access memory. And that's really our typical computer system. And Turing is the, for those who don't know the Turing, Turing is Alan Turing. He's the, called the father of uh, Alan Turing. He's a scientist. Alan Turing, call him father of modern computer systems. And his model, which we will cover, <laughs> actually is used all over computer systems with some uh, variation. So this is the finite automaton, and the finite automaton is uh, divided into two. There is something called deterministic, and non-deterministic, and we'll talk about both. So this is deterministic, non-deterministic automata. And let me do the, something here. Okay. And the deterministic is called, will be called uh, DFA, stands for deterministic, and non-deterministic will be called NFA, and we will be talking more uh, and this is the automata. It, it does have input output, of course, because these are not part of the automata, but it does not have memory. And that's a very major uh, difference between uh, determine, between finite automata and the other types of automata. Examples, elevators, vending machines, uh, like vending machine when you go to order coffee from a vending machine, it will be uh, it asks you in uh, uh, insert money, uh, choose your selection, uh, and then choose, let's say, coffee, add sugar, uh, add cream, and then it dispenses the coffee, and that's it. Now, when I come the next one, he needs to uh, purchase another thing from the, uh, from the machine. The machine does not keep any memory of the previous state, what happened before uh, in the previous client. And the elevator is the same, same thing. You go to the elevator, you push a button, say floor number four, it will take you to floor number four. Then someone, you get out, someone pushes the button, goes to floor number two and so on. There is no memory here. The elevator does not have to memorize the sequences or what has happened uh, throughout the day. The other type of automata, still, I still have the same automata, I have the States, these are my states, these are my states, these are my transitions. This could be here. Uh, let me uh, put somewhere here to, to change that. Make this my final state. Uh, whoops, where did I do here? Ah. No. Hmm. Okay. Whatever, I made this uh, different color to make it a final. So it does have an initial state. We'll show about, talk about that. It has transitions, it has a final state, and it does have a memory now. But this memory is limited. Why it's limited? It's limited not in terms of the number of bytes or the size. It's limited in the way you address this memory. So the way you address this memory or you deal with it, you either push an element on top of the stack or pop an element from the top of the stack. If you need an element here, right at the bottom, you have to pop or take, retrieve all the data above in order to reach to this data, which is right here. And then you can fill the stack uh, up one more time. And the Turing machine, which is the third type of automata, uh, it has a random now access memory. It's not a stack, it's RAM where you can address any location of memory and uh, read any location of memory if you know the address of that memory. And the automata for the transition, the state and the transitions are all the same. An example here, let me go back here. An example for the push down automata is uh, compilers for programming languages. Uh, note that I put here medium computing power or the computing power is limited by the fact my memory is uh, 
uh, uh, can use only stack type of memory. And I should have mentioned that the DFA or the NFA or the, F the finite automata has the small computing power because it does not have to go to memory at all. Uh, so its computation capability is limited. It's not that it does not need energy. It does need energy, but the, the, uh, uh, the computation, which means the problems it can solve is limited, is small compared to the stack. It, has, it can compute, it can address more types of problems. It can solve more issues than the uh, finite automata. And if you come to the Turing machine, it has the highest computing power. It solves almost all types of problems which have solutions. If a problem does not have solution at all, no one can solve it. But the problems like the non-polynomial, NP-complete, the exponential ones, uh, neither the Turing machine nor any other machine can do it. So, but the Turing machine has the highest computing power among all types of computation systems. <clears throat> for a quick comparison here, for the power of automata, the uh, finite automata here has simple problems. It is less power going this way, and this is the more power. Uh, push down automata has higher power than the finite automata. Turing machine has higher power than uh, all of them, and it can deal with all types of computational problems. But there is a question I usually give in my class, say, are there any computational problems that a Turing machine cannot solve? Yes, of course, the unsolvable problems. We call them NP-complete problems. Call them NP-complete problems. You have seen these problems in your uh, algorithm courses which you have taken. They are called NP-complete, believe, believe to take exponential time to be to solve. And the polynomial problems solved in polynomial time, so they can be done with Turing machine. This is what I wanted to say about my about the computation uh, models that we will be using. Uh, going back in the front, we will uh, address the finite the automata, both DFA and NFA. We'll go through that uh, length. Then we will go to push down automata and we'll see how we can design these automata and solve problems with it. Then we'll go to the Turing machine. This is the fun machine where you really can have fun in building these machines and playing with them. Uh, and then we will see, of course, the complexity of each of these uh, automata. All right, I'll stop right here. And then of course our next, uh, then I will, since our, uh, our course here is, Centered around the uh, centered around the uh, automata and the languages. So then I will uh, talk about the languages a little bit. Then I will start diving deep into this uh, automata theory. All right. Uh, thank you, and we will. Uh, I will see you in the next uh, lecture.